you'll find out if you go and race a Razor UTV, one of the weak links are especially these radius rods. And I've had we've had people bend the uh, trailing arms, front A arms, everything. So if you're into serious racing, then you definitely want to get a full suspension kit. And this is a full suspension kit we went with from ORB Fabrication. Uh, Justin Pierpoint has beat the crap out of this suspension and a ton of the racers run this suspension and trust it. So that's the one we definitely wanted to go with. And today we're going to throw it on our Razor and see how it holds up. This is a full suspension kit from ORB Fabrication. It comes with upper and lower A-arms, as well as these beefy trailing arms and radius rods. Also options on the site that we opted to go with are these beefier tie rods and sway bar end links. And they also have bushings and sleeve kits that are a lot stronger than the factory Polaris stuff. And you can get it in any color you want. And uh, we opted for flat black. So we're here today at the ORB shop in Tennessee. Uh, we're doing an install for Matt with Bustin' Knuckles. Uh, he's racing and he wants some good performance parts, so we're gonna hook him up. This is a set of our Ford uh, high clearance Heim day arms. Uh, they're one and a half inches forward, so you gain a little wheel base, get a little better approach angle, get the wheels out front a little bit. Uh, the upper A arm is all DOM construction. Uh, we, we try to buy US made DOM steel. Uh, this, the main bar is an uh, inch and a quarter 120 wall. This back bar with the bends in it, which is your problem area on a lot of the 1000 arms, we actually use a quarter inch thick wall DOM. So it really gives you a lot of strength. Uh, the lower is all inch and a quarter 120 wall DOM. Uh, we use 7 8 times with uh, chrome molly kingpins. So they're about as tough as you can buy. All right, we got our razor up in the air and we got the tire and wheel off. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and get the 15 millimeter bolts. There's two of them out of the caliper, remove the caliper. The next thing you need to do is go ahead and remove the brake line. All right, now that we've got the shock bolt removed, we've tied the shock up out of the way. The next step is to take the bolt out of the lower part of the control arm. And then you want to go ahead and hold on to the hub and knock the ball joint out of the knuckle. Now that we got that done, all you have to do is take the remaining two bolts out of the frame side of the control arm and remove the arm. All right, now we need to remove the upper A-arm. Uh, we've loosened up all the 15 millimeter bolts. There's one here at the axle end and two up at the frame side. We loosen them up. The first step is to go ahead and remove this one. And then you want to wiggle the ball joint out of the knuckle. And remove the A-arm. All right, quick note, make sure that you let this down gently so you don't pull your axle apart or pull it out of the dip. Before you throw away these A-arms, the factory ones, you're definitely gonna need to keep a few things off of it. First off, we're gonna drill and reuse these brake clamps. You just drill out the rivet and then we'll use a self-tapping screw to hold them onto the new arms. And you're also gonna need these grease fittings. It's a 3 8 inch wrench to, to remove them. And also, you can use reuse these bushings. These are probably wore out, they're stock factory ones. We decided to go with some brand new sleeves and Bushings from our B-Fab, a lot stronger, better parts, and uh, we decided to go with that so we don't even need the bushings out of the factory ones. You can also use some P-clamps or some zip ties if you don't want to use the factory retainers. So now that we got the stock arms removed and everything off of them that we need, it's time to prep the ORB fab arms. First thing you want to do is remove the himes and make sure that you put some a good coat of anesthes on them, reinstall them, and then we're going to put the bushings in. The factory bushings will install pretty easily, but we opted for the ORB ones. They're built better to tighter tolerance, so we're going to have to press them in. So you want to 
put the two plastic pieces in first and then put the sleeve in. But it's easy to use, a, use this doing a, with a press, but you can also use a hammer if you're really careful with it. We're going to use an arbor press, so. Okay, now we've got our grease fittings in. These are UHMW. They are no maintenance. You don't have to do anything to them. We just, they have a hole pre-drilled in the A-arm, so we just put them back in. You don't have to grease them. We just put them in there, you know, keep dust out of there. You can put bolts in there, plugs, whatever you want to do. All right. Also, if you want to keep the brake retainers from the stock Polaris, we just took some self-tapping screws, put this back here. You want your brake line to run down the middle of the A-arm. So just go ahead, put it in place, self tap and screw it in there. All right, now we're almost ready to install the A-arm on the razor. First thing you wanna do, you wanna make sure this heim here is all the way in and make sure that the fattest spacer is towards the front of the razor. All right, once you have your upper A-arm all bolted into place, make sure you get back and snug up this rear jam nut and then reinstall your shock. Now that we got the shock all bolted into place, we're going to go ahead and put the knuckle up into the kingpin to get this out of our way so we can install the lower control arm. Okay, next we're going to install the lower control arm. Make sure that the heim joint is all the way in the arm. This is where it's going to be set up and we'll go ahead and adjust the camber with the upper A arm. Now that we got the lower control arm all bolted in at the frame side, we want to go ahead and install the kingpin into the lower part of the knuckle. Uh, one good trick is to use this 5 16 Allen wrench to line up the groove so the bolt goes in easily. Now. All right, now that we got the lower A arm bolted in, we want to go ahead and adjust our camber. First thing you do is take a level, put it on the brake rotor, and we're going to want to adjust it out using taking this out and screwing out the heim, and we're going to want to take this brake rotor and lean it out until it's about half a bubble past the line on this side. All right, looks like it's going to take about three or four turns. All right, looks like we need to go at least one more turn. All right, looks like we're pretty close to where we want to be. This should be a good starting point. If you like your camber different than this, you can drive it around and kind of get a feel for it and come back and adjust it. It's real easy to adjust it right here at the, at the heim on the upper control arm. Swivel wibble. All right, once you get the brake line all into place, make sure you got enough room so the tire can turn lock to lock without putting any stress on that brake line. All right, and then the last thing you want to do is you want to make sure that this uh, heim right here is flush up and down and make sure you tighten up the jam nut. Sometimes using two wrenches will help. Okay, this is what the finished product should look like. If yours doesn't look like this, go back to step one and start over with. But otherwise, that's all there is to it. All right, well, we've done knocked out the forward Heim A-arms, got them all adjusted, we've got the brake line on there, got the bushings, everything's installed, those are finished. So now to top off the front, we're gonna go ahead and throw some of our ORB HD tie rods. Uh, these are drastically stronger than the stock. They use a chromoly clevis with a bolt, so easy insulation, easy maintenance, double Heim, lots of strength, cheap to replace. Um, we use a chromoly kingpin type on the end with a, uh, with a 
has a taper instead of just using a bolt and clevis because we all know that's a trouble design have a lot of problems with them so i guess we're gonna now we're gonna knock these out and he'll be ready in the front all right first thing you want to do is you want to get the cotter pin out of this loosen up this bolt and then we're going to get to work on the inside All right, next thing you do is there is a zip tie on the end of this boot where it goes in the steering rack. You're gonna pop off the zip tie and then pull the boot over itself to get it out of the way. Expose your steering rack. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is loosen up this ball joint. The ball joint is what attaches the steering rack to the tie rod end. So ours has wrench flats, luckily, so it should be easy to turn. Otherwise, you can use a good set of channel locks or even a pipe wrench. Luckily for us, it was easy to get off. Some of these come with red Loctite on them and you might have to heat them up to get them loose. Something we want to keep from the stock tie rod is we want to keep the boot to put over the ORB one. So you want to go ahead and loosen this up. It is left hand thread. Take it off and slide the boot off the end. Next thing you want to do is install your ORB fab clevis onto the end of your factory steering rack. Make sure you use red thread locker. Make sure you have the bolt holes parallel to the floor and get it good and tight. All right, there's a few things you want to do before you install your HD tie rods. First off, make sure that you take the himes out and go ahead and put some anises on them and then screw them back in. That way it'll make them easy to adjust and they won't ever lock up on you. Another thing to make sure of is that you put the ridge flats out towards the tire. This way you can get in there and adjust them easily. They're a left hand and a right hand thread hind. That way you can adjust it while it's on the machine without having to take it off. Once you get the gear rack side installed, go ahead and tighten it down. It's a 916 on both ends. All right, next thing you want to do is go ahead and remove this heim because we're going to put the factory boot on. We went ahead and cut a slot in it because these are a little thicker than the factory tie rods. And we're going to go ahead and slide that on into place to cover up the rack. Better float your boat. Okay, something on the 2014s that you have to know about. The, uh, the hole for the knuckle is not as big as a 15 and 16 model or a 15 and up model. So you want to take a half inch drill bit and go ahead and drill that out. Not a big deal. And that way everything fits and works just fine. To install the tie rod in the knuckle, we're going to go ahead and make sure that both hinds are all the way in. This is a good starting point and that way we can fine tune it once we get it down on the ground and it'll be even on both ends. Okay, one thing to note on the tie rod end that comes from ORB is it is a tapered end. So go ahead and get it put in the knuckle, go ahead and get the nut started as well, and then cinch it down with an impact. It's not gonna come all the way down to the knuckle because it's tapered, so get it, get it pulled down until it's tight and then you're good to go. Now all you gotta do is go ahead and center the wheel up in the cockpit of the razor and then uh, go ahead and get it kind of close to straight with the adjustment of the tie rod. Leave everything loose. Go ahead and put the tire back on. We're going to put it back down on the ground. Get everything fine-tuned. Tighten all the jam nuts up. Slide the cover over the rack and you're ready to go. All right, well, we've got the front knocked out. We've got the forward A-arms. We've got the tie rods all installed. Now it's time to throw some of these HD ORB trailing arms on there. Uh, these are made out of two by two quarter wall. Um, they give you about two and a half inches additional ground clearance and they're well gusted so they're a lot stronger. It's good for any racer, anybody in the rock world. First thing you want to do when you get your trailing arms is take out the heim and make sure you put some anises on it and then thread it back in, get it set up where it's straight up and down with the shock and tighten down the jam nut and you're ready to install. First thing you want to do is remove the T25 torque spits that are holding down the brake line. Next thing you want to do is remove the radius rod bolts at the hub side and uh, they're 15 at both ends. 
15 millimeter. Next thing you want to do is remove the hub assembly from the trailing arm. Uh, trailing arm. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. The way a lot of people can do it is they'll remove the axle nut and the brake caliper and pull it all off and then get to the bolts. But the way that we do it is we just go ahead and get the four bolts that are attached to the trailing arm. If you put the machine in neutral, you can rotate it around and get to each one of the bolts and pull it off as a whole assembly and it saves a lot of time. Just make sure that you don't pull the axle out of socket. Okay, now that we got the hub and everything separated as a unit away from the trailing arm, we went ahead and tied it up out of the way. This will keep it out of our way and make sure it doesn't slide out of the, out of the diff or out of socket. Next thing you need to do is just go ahead and get the bolt out of the, the shot and then the sway bar end link and then take the one out of the frame side. Alright, we got the old trailing arm out. It's time to install the ORB fab unit and uh, just reverse the process starting at the, at the frame side and work your way back to the hub. We went ahead and put the front bolt in into the heim. And next you want to skip the sway bar end link and go ahead and do the shot. Uh, make sure uh, that you put the brake line on the inside of the shock mount because it's got a brace here so you don't rip the shock mount off and that way it'll go in here on the stock one they run under the shock so make sure you run it on the outside of the shock on the ORB ones and the reason that you don't go ahead and put the sway bar in links on is these mounts are a little bit different so it's easier to wait until you get both sides installed before doing the sway bar in links. All right, as you can see, we got the shock all mounted into place and got the trailing arm up where it needs to be. We went ahead and unhooked the strap from the hub assembly, and now we're just going to rotate it into place and get it mounted up. Alright, now we've got the trailing arm and hub assembly all mounted together, so the next thing we need to do is just go ahead and put the radius arms back on. Radius arms are all installed. The last thing you need to do is go ahead and remount the brake line with the hardware provided in the trailing arm and just make sure that you mount it so you're pulling the slack out and so you don't have a bunch of slack over here that's going to get caught in your wheel. Alright, well, we've been moving right along. Got the trailing arms all installed. Uh, now we're about to do something that's kind of small but also important. These are sway bar end links. These particular ones are 70-75 inch and a quarter hex. Uh, our common version is a one inch solid DOM steel or one inch 250 wall steel. Um, same length, pretty simple instruction installation these are a lot of people don't think these are important but what happens with your stock ones is it'll actually pull them apart or the bushings get loose you put these on there it gives you a little more rigid ride helps you in the track if you're trying to go fast the removal of the factory sway bar end links is pretty simple you got two bolts they're both 15 millimeter on both sides so just remove those and get the other one in Okay, the first thing you want to do with your sway bar end links, the ORB set, you want to go ahead and take the times all the way out, put a good coat of anisease on them, thread them all the way back in. Thread it all the way in is going to be about the right length for the sway bar end links to be just like the factory ones. All right, for the spacers on these, you want to make sure that the skinniest, smallest spacer is against the sway bar. And obviously it goes on the inside of the sway bar. And then on the bottom, it's going to be just the opposite. The smallest sway, the smallest bushing is going to face towards the motor.
Last thing you want to do is take a 15 16 wrench and go ahead and tighten these jam nuts up, and then you're good to go. Now to top off the back, we got the uh, our race rods. These are inch and a quarter, 70-75 hex. Uh, probably the strongest radius rods made. Uh, they're not high clearance, but they're so strong it just don't matter. First step you want to do is you want to remove these 15 millimeter bolts. There's uh, one for each radius rod at the frame end, and then one for each at the hub end. And you just need a 15 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter wrench. This is the ORB high clearance lower radius rod. It comes with a bushing at the frame end and a heim at the axle end or the hub end. And obviously you can see why we need to upgrade ours because our radius rod was bent. If, you, if yours is not bent, you could just stack it on top and put bolts through and adjust it till it's right. Well, ours is bent, so we know that it needs to be center to center 25 to 25 and an eighth. And when you install, you might still have to fine tune it a little bit, depending on you know if you have stock uppers or if you got different tires and wheels. So there's still a little bit of adjustability there. This is the upper ORB radius rod. The thinner spacers go towards the hub side, and the thicker spacers go towards the frame side. And it's a left hand and right hand thread, so that way you can adjust it while it's on the machine without having to remove it. Also, the thicker one of the spacers needs to go towards the motor and the thinner one needs to go towards the plate on the back of the razor. These are the, the ORB race rods that they make. They're made out of 7075 aluminum and really the only difference between these and the high clearance arms is they have himes at both ends and they basically install the same way and adjust the same way. We've got our radius rods adjusted to 20, between 25 and 25 and an eighth and we're going to show you how to put the race rods on there but it's the exact same installation process for both. Remember that the thicker spacers go towards the frame side and the thicker of the two spacers goes towards the engine. See how this one's thinner and this one's thicker? The thicker one goes towards the motor. And if you're having a hard time getting the radius rod to slide in, it helps to loosen up the other side. Make sure you just leave everything finger tightened until you're done with the install and then you can tighten everything up once you're finished. If you're installing the high clearance ORB arms on a machine that has factory trailing arms, you want to go ahead and clearance this corner of the stock trailing arm. Alright, we've got the lower installed and now it's time to install the upper and install just the same as the lower. Alright, the next step once you get all that installed is to adjust your camber. And the easiest way to do this is to stick a level on your rotor and then adjust it in to where the bubble is about a quarter of a bubble inside the inside line. All right there. That's it. That's it for the radius rod install. Once you get everything done, make sure, don't forget to tighten everything up. Go run around the yard a couple times and then come back and make sure everything's good and snug. And if you need to adjust your camber any, just remember you can loosen these back up and adjust it with this top radius rod and you should be good to go. All right, we got the razor down on the ground. Went and rode it around the yard a little bit and then came back in and kind of eyeballed it, adjusted the tie rod so it looked like we had the kind of toe we want. And uh, now it's just time to tighten it back up. We're going to slip the, the boots over the, over the rack and go ahead and put a zip tie on them. Call it good. You guys, that's all there is to these kits. They're not that hard to install. It takes a few hours. Have some help. Uh, it definitely helps to have somebody that's put on a ton of these kits. Uh, big thanks to Justin's Pierpoint and ORB Fabrication for the hookup on the kit. This kit is well built and as you can tell from the Razor, we went out and thrashed on it to test it out. Didn't have a single issue with the, the suspension. It's working great. It's tough. Uh, 
we wanted to film it, but it came a huge rainstorm, so we didn't get to video any of it. So you'll just have to wait and see it at the next race. But you want to check out some other older episodes of Extreme UTV Tech, they're over here in the corner. And big thanks to ORB Fab. You can click on that link over there and check out some of their products. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching. Okay, now we've got our Zerk fittings put in. That's right, right? Zerk? Grease? Let me start again. Grease. Right. And it's going to install right on the end of the factory steering rack. Let me start that over again. So they're pretty heavy. They're well gusseted. Uh, they're a direct replacement. A little better ground clearance. A little better. A little, a little, I messed up. I messed up.